Okay, so today what I got is the spindles for the case tractor. I got all three of them out. They're all getting brand new uh, spindle bearings top and bottom. Now if you look there, you'll see the half moon flywheel or half moon woodruff key in there. Um, sometimes those can be a little difficult to get out. Sometimes if you grab them with a pair of uh, like wire cutters, actually bite into them a little and pry them up. Or use a pair of these like end end nippers to try to grab a hold of them. Um, so other times, if you get a screwdriver on, that's hard to do it in the camera. If you get the screwdriver there and push down, sometimes it'll roll it out. But these ones you're up against the washer, so it's kind of hard to do. So anyway, you can get those out. Start there. Okay, so what I had to do on mine, these ones did fight me a little bit because they do fit so well. Is so you got the half moon, half moon thing. If you hit on the bottom in with the chisel, it'll rock it out on the top, and then you can get a better bite and pull it out with the pair of. Uh, like I, I said, I hit. I I got a pair of wire cutters actually. You can see the little bite mark on there. Bite it and roll it up the rest of the way. That's the way mine had to come out, but uh, you might have an easier time than I did. Okay, what I'm going to use to take these out, I found the press is a lot easier than trying to hammer them out. And uh, I've just got this manual arbor press. You can use any press you got. You may have luck hammering them out, um, but the chances of mushrooming over the threads and damaging them beyond repair is pretty good. So I'm going to take the washer off on mine. This I made up for uh, John Deere spindles, just two by fours. I've got it pretty crushed now. Now I'm going to figure out something better later, but right now it looks like it'll also fit these. So I'm going to try it and see if I have it. It doesn't quite, it isn't quite level. Um, it doesn't quite fit in there, but let's, let's see if it'll push them out there. Yeah, it pushes them right through. And now I'm bottomed out already on the bottom of my board. Oh geez, that was that was super. It literally fell out. You don't usually get that lucky. Okay, so one of them stayed down here. So that's going to be a problem. Uh, one of them is still down at the bottom here, so I'm going to have to figure out how to pry that upwards. But uh, this one will come out real easy. Go here. Maybe put a socket or something. Push it through. Or is there a retaining nut there? I didn't even look. No, but you can see that's pretty rusty in there. So it's going to take uh, maybe an impact to get that out. And what I mean by an impact is I'm going to actually hit the top of my press while I got pressure on it. Try to get you in the shot there. I'm going to put some downward pressure on it. I'm going to get it so this is about halfway. And then I'm going to hit the top of the press with the hammer to get a little impact going. There it goes. Once you get it started, that one actually fell right through. Force on it and you might break this aluminum, which is actually kind of cheesy for something of a heavy duty nature like this tractor. But uh, anyway, there's your bearing. No problems. And then the other one. I'll have to see how I'm going to get that out. Just for the heck of it, let's try another one of these. I only have to really show you one so you know how, but let's just see if we get that lucky twice. Oh, it literally falls out. That's awesome. Ah, and this one came no bearing. Oh, here's what's interesting. I didn't realize this piece is loose so if I okay that's actually good to know if you hit that gentle you're gonna roll those threads and you're gonna be sorry trust the guy that knows also down here I see there's a it goes the cone then a spacer then the bearing just so that's good to know
Won't come easy. Sort of. Doesn't matter how you how you get them off. It matters how they go on, so you don't have anything damaged. So I just have to finish getting it all the way off. Okay, so that one was easy. Uh, I just literally kept kept pulling it off. The other thing you could use is if you were very gentle, um, a bearing puller or a pulley puller. But these ones actually must be made just such that they are able to slip off which is really lucky I didn't expect it to go that easy now back to the first one I'll take the uh, sleeve or spacer off of it now I'm going to try to drive something in between here to try to get that started coming up and let's see if that works okay got it out just fine what I had to do was take something I ended up uh, having to booger it a little bit I gotta bend that back but took something wedged it under here the second it came come loose it broke loose from where it was sitting it came up easy so that one was no problem so I just realized uh, the bearings I ordered which were these are wrong the shaft size, no good. Um, outside diameter is no good either. So I got to look what happened there. Um, I bought two packages, two sleeves of these, and I don't know if I screwed up or they screwed up, but time to reorder. Okay, got the last one of mine all the way out. Um, what I ended up having to do was picture it was like this. I put a big gear puller. Got it all the way down here. Grabbed this, put the gear puller pin there, and, and pulled it out. This one was um, the one that I had to cut out, so it already had some damage on the shaft, which I probably should have pre-sanded. And also, this inside was absolutely locked onto that bearing. Those bearings were crazy rusty. Those had been getting uh, water on them for quite some time that was damaged in that flood I was mentioning, and just general years of service. So. Um, to put them back in, what you would do, put this on a flat surface, get a socket. You do not want to hammer the inside ring here. You want to hammer close to the outside, which is the body of the bearing. If you were to hammer on the inside of the bearing, you are putting all the pressure from that inside ring through the balls all the way out to the outside race, and you're going to damage it. Not maybe, you're going to. So the way you put them back in, you get it on a flat surface, put the bearing almost flat like that, flat as you can get, get something that pushes on the outside but clears something smaller than something that will fit inside that, but just barely. I'm using a socket because that's what I got. You would get your press lined up or if you're going to hammer it, do that way, and then you would just lower it right down with the press. The press makes it look very easy, um, but that's how you would put them in. You'd put them in until it stops, then you turn it over, put it in until it stops, then install your shaft, reassemble everything. Thanks for watching. And just for reference, one of these I was able to still read the bottom of it. 204 RSS is the ones that fit mine. I assume that's 6204. Our R R S, not R S S. Anyway, look up uh, look up your original case part numbers because that's where I failed, and now I've got to wait for more parts.